Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. Going to do a pitch analysis here of Landon, pair him up with Cody Hall. Take them both into their leg lifts. Okay. Very similar in their leg lifts. Landon a little bit more aggressive into his leg lift. Let's see how they come out of their leg lifts and stay loaded uh, into their drive legs. So you can see similar, except for the fact of Cody more counter rotation in the trunk than Landon and more torsion in the drive leg, which means more stability. We can see Landon here losing stability as that leg is starting to turn inward. Um, so basically, when, when Cody's able to get more counter rotation in the trunk, it's going to uh, flex the hip more and pu put more weight in the posterior chain and allow the uh, the drive leg to hold torsion longer, which is going to delay rotation and allow him to uh, peak more forces through his hip rotation. Uh, then Landon here, you can see. So when Landon goes to open, quickly that back leg collapses. Okay, so that's a collapsing back leg as he hits front foot. You can see the front knee is really what's driving rotation here as that front knee swings out pretty hard and that back knee follows and drives down. And what you have is him still in the rubber, Landon still in the rubber, so you're not going to get a lot of force through the back hip, which is driving this back shoulder. Even though he's doing a good job of keeping his shoulders closed, he's not going to have a lot of energy coiled up right here to release. So if we watch Cody going into front foot, as he opens, you see him staying longer on his backside and getting more force and push through the, through the, the, the rubber as he hits front foot strikes. Now the difference is he has more force coming through the back hip, driving hip rotation, which is going to drive the back shoulder. So more momentum, more, fo more force coming from Cody, and also too, a more cl close shoulder orientation. So he was able to do that with more counter rotation, which is basically like, basically like him pulling his slingshot back even harder. So, and also too, you can see Landon's tucking early here, uh, which is because the glove side's trying to help drive the back shoulder because the back hip didn't create enough power. You can see Cody has all the time to, or the glove side doesn't want to get involved, so he has time to uh, allow more energy to drive through the back hip. And then as the trunk wants to release, or that back hip drives the back shoulder, the glove tucks with the trunk rotation as the trunk carries forward. So if we take them both in that same position, you're gonna see a lot more four trunk tilts here with Cody, which is a big predictor of velocity. So, you know, considerably more four trunk tilts out of Cody with a similar, even similar front leg position. Also too, because Landon pulled glove side early, he's getting hyperangulated or that, that elbow's pulling behind the back and that's really hard on the front of the shoulder, and that will delay pronation in the forearm, which can be also hard on the front on the elbow. So as he goes to release, and Cody goes to release, you see Cody continuing to drive his trunk, um, and even though he wasn't able to drive his front leg, still more energy was coming down the mound through hip to shoulder separation and catapulting all that trunk power forward, which is what uh, put Cody in a higher, you know, this pitch was 96. Uh, I don't know the, the pitch of Landon, but at a higher velocity. So Landon just needs to focus on holding torsion, counter-rotating more, and getting more power off the rubber through the hip rotation, uh, and, and then seeing that all translate better through his trunk, and even getting his front leg maybe even to support that and drive and push back. And that'd be a big, big jump for him in velocity.